Hey everyone, welcome to the Gaming X. Today, we'll be taking a look at our review for the vanishing of Ethan Carter on the Xbox One. Now, this was also released way back in 2015 on the PlayStation 4 and PC. So this is a first person story driven mystery game focused on exploration and discovery. Playing as Detective Paul Prospero, you receive a number of disturbing letters from Ethan Carter. Realising the danger Ethan is in, you visit the town of Red Creek Valley, set on finding out what has happened and solve this mystery. Now this is a story driven title which does not hold your hand and the game warns you immediately, but it is the selling point here. This is narrative based gaming and I must reinforce that. Now before we jump into our review, if you like what you see today then hit like and even consider hitting subscribe. We'll have new reviews and news for you every Monday, Thursday and Saturday, covering the Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. With that being said, let's take a look if the vanishing of Ethan Carter is a case worth investigating. So let's start with graphics and I don't have much to say other than this might be the most beautiful game I have ever seen on the console. Whether that's a standard Xbox One or on the new and more powerful Xbox One X, there's just so much power on display here. I on multiple occasions found myself stopping just to take in the environments as the detail really is breathtaking. Every detail has been fine tuned to perfection whether that's far away in the distance or right next to you, it all feels realised and unique. Individual blades of grass, rocks scattered, forest areas where there's a natural spread of trees and bark, houses crippling under age and disregard, all surrounded by beautiful vistas. There's just so many graphical elements I could talk about. Finally, in regards to the graphics, this game was actually developed four years ago and was on the Unreal Engine 3. When it made its way to the PlayStation 4, they upgraded this to the Unreal Engine 4. Finally, with the Xbox One X, they've now added the additional full native 4K. What the developers have done though is they've given the player the power. They've provided options. You want full native 4K on the Xbox One X? You've got it, but expect a trade off with frame rate. Want to balance frame rate and graphical touches? They have that too. I like it when developers give us the choice, so it's great work all around. This is by far a showcase though for any Xbox owner. So let's talk about gameplay and functionality of this title. For lack of a better comparison, this can heavily be compared to a walking simulator. So much in fact, it appears the developers, the astronauts, have embraced this idea with an Xbox One exclusive. A free roaming mode where all the blood and horror has been removed, simply leaving this beautiful town to explore. Gameplay is naturally limited here to directional movement, but if that's your thing, it's here. The core game mode is where the majority of us will spend our time however, and I'm going to fight any spoilers, but as I said in the opening, this is narrative based gaming. You are here for the storyline, so there's no Outlast style combat or hiding, there's no Resident Evil monsters to battle, but there's always something lurking. This is largely left to your own imagination, it's psychological horror and it gets everything right. Now it might not have the gratuitous levels of gore we are so accustomed to now, but what it does here is real tension, it's real fear that had me asking questions, all balanced alongside real curiosity that kept me pushing further into my investigation. Now the gameplay really comes down to three elements. Directional movement, naturally. Interactive objects, and this is beautifully tackled whether investigating a corpse or simply an object. You will actually see Paul's thoughts appear on screen in text where you can then interact with them. It's a nice graphical change in comparison to the button we're used to seeing so much on our screens. Finally, Paul's connection to the occult, which I've not mentioned yet, and here you can see into the past, view what has gone on before, and communicate with the dead. Now I'm going to leave that there as it's such a huge part of the storyline, and while it is immediately available to you, it's difficult to talk about without any spoilers. Now what I will say is, this game has a great balance between driving the story forward, some great puzzle design that you interact with, and a basic level of investigation skills and input to make you feel essential. My final note on the gameplay is direction, and there is none. 
dropped into the valley, there is clues to where you need to be or potential puzzles, but there is little to no hand holding. On multiple occasions I found myself lost in the game, but it never felt like I was wasting my time. I was developing my bond with this town presented here. Even the conversations you have will need to be memorised, as there's no record kept of what takes place. I never felt disconnected from the storyline though, it gave me all the control I needed to feel like I was in charge of the show, and that's really all we should expect in such a heavily narrative based title. Now one very minor issue I did have was the game's save locations. Having such huge amounts of freedom did mean I would get lost occasionally. If that save did not kick in when I reloaded up the next time, it would take me some time to get my bearings and understand where on the map I was. Apart from this though, it's another great piece of work from the team. Finally audio, and like the gameplay and graphics, it's another great piece of work. The environments are well established, and they offer the level of detail expected to support the graphical powerhouse that this is. The music is as eerie as we would expect, playing perfectly into the tonality of the horror presented. And if you are playing in the newly in place free roaming mode, then the music will actually be removed, and you will feel like you are there. It's these little touches that show just how much love went not only into creating the original title, but how much love they have overall for the game's world. Now Soma attempted something similar recently, where you was actually invincible, but here they've fully repurposed the world. So the final verdict, and as you can probably tell, I fell in love with this game. Stunning visuals, alongside a storyline, and an ending that immediately made me want to go back for a second playthrough. It had me hooked from start to finish. This world felt real, and that's the biggest compliment I can give this title, especially when the majority of this world is in fact empty. Then there was the music and audio, and that for me solidified it as a must-play title, with atmosphere I haven't experienced in a video game for quite some time. Some very minor issues were faced, such as those save locations, and the lack of direction definitely added a challenge and unnecessary element of difficulty at times. But overall, I can easily recommend this one. The Gaming X awards the vanishing of Ethan Carter a 9 out of 10. Now if you like what you saw today then consider hitting subscribe. We have some great titles coming up and if there's anything in particular you want to see on our channel, let us know in the comments below. Thanks and we'll see you on the next Gaming X.